Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to a rainbow of a joyous podcast 12.2, where we'll define titration, do a little math with it, um, talk about buffers, and how we can be very, very, very safe through the joy of buffers. Um, stay two parts of the buffering system, um, explain the function of each part of the buffering system, that would be each part of the two parts, um, writing equations for what happens, um, acid anhydride and base anhydride, and then talk a little bit about acid rain and hopefully no acid rainbows. So let's get started. Titrations. A titration is a lab performed to find the unknown concentration of an acid, or a lab performed to find the unknown concentration of a base. This is actually really done by scientists. They can find out how much aspirin is in an aspirin tablet to see if people are cheating you, and you're not getting aspirin, and they're really putting in, I don't know, sugar cubes or something or other. And you can figure out how much acid is in something or how much of a base is in something. Or we mentioned acid rain before. It can tell us how much acid rain is in, how much acid is in the rain to figure out if it's really going to hurt our plants or if we just don't care or if, look out, look out, we're all going to dissolve. The formula for titrations are X MAVA equals X MBVB. The X is the number of H's for the acids or OH's for the bases. So let me give you an example of that. Here's three examples. We'll do H2SO4, H3PO4, and HCl. Okay. For all of these are all acids. Hello, I'm an acid. Hello, I'm an acid. Hello, I'm an acid. So they all start with H, they're acids. And the X value for this one, I have two H's, so X is 2. For H3PO4, it has three H's, so X is 3. HCl, yeah, thanks, Mr. Five, for counting to 1 for me. I really appreciate it. Bases are pretty much the same thing. And I could have aluminum hydroxide. I could have um, potassium hydroxide. Or I could have barium hydroxide. Now, in bases, we don't care about the H part. We care about the OH part. Okay? So here I have three OHs, so the X for this base is 3. The X for this base is 1. The X for this base is 2. Again, however many OHs you have tells you the X. M is the molarity, my favorite unit of concentration. Sometimes it's shown like that. And volume, which for us will typically be in milliliters. And that's it. So we get to plug and chug, do a little math fun. Titration. Again, we use it to find an unknown molarity. Um, the instrument we use is called a burette. Okay, it is a burette. And we use it because it is very accurate, measuring to the one hundredth of a milliliter. And what we do is we take a burette and we drop, 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 drop some of in it. And it usually starts out clear. And we know that we're done because we put an indicator in it that will change from clear to <gasps> purple or whatever it is we're going through. I think we're having something change to pink. You looked at all those different indicators in our indicator lab. My favorite is brome scrimal green, which isn't even one, but you get the idea. It takes 54 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. Now I want to point out this milliliter and this molarity are close to each other. They have the word of, which means you're going to multiply them. Okay? So these go together. They're a pair. To neutralize 125 milliliters of an HCl solution. So all I have, this is milliliters. This would be volume. So as soon as I recognize this as a titration equation, I write the equation XMAVA equals XMBVB. So my acid is HCl, and the X value, 1H, is 1. The molarity of my acid, let's see here, um, 125 milliliters. That's not molarity, so that must be what I'm looking for. The volume of my acid is 125 milliliters. Look at my base, how many OHs do I have? I have 1. The molarity of my base, 0.1. The volume of my base is 54. I do encourage you to label, either write B, B over these so you know where they are, A, or you notice I boxed mine together and grouped them like that. And then you get out your handy dandy calculator, and I have 1 times 0 0.1 times 54 over 125. Remember, all of these things are simply cross multiplication, so I move them down to the bottom. Okay. So on 0 0.1 times 54 divided by 1. Divided by 125. Remember, divide by everything on the bottom. And we get 0 0.0432 molar. And that's it. Molar of the acid. Easy as pi. Mmm, pi. It takes 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar KOH solution. Here's my of part again. These guys are together. K 
KOH as a base to completely neutralize 125 milliliters of H2SO4. What is the concentration of the H2SO4 solution? So again, I know it's a titration because I'm mixing acids and bases. XMAVA equals XMBVB. So the X for my acid, mm, sulfuric acid is right here. X is how many H's? Two. Molarity of my acid, see that's the volume of the acid for milliliters. I don't have a molarity of my acid. I'm going to solve for that again. The volume of my acid is 125. X up for my base. I have KOH, only one of those. Molarity of my base is 0.5. And volume of my base is 50. Again, I solve for M sub A equals 1 times 0.5. Again, it's cross-multiplication, 50. And then I throw these down here, and I cross-multiply 2 and 125. And remember, everything on the bottom you divide by. So 1 times 0.5 times 50 divided by 2 divided by 125 is 0.100 molar. Okay, Not too bad. You did a nice job on that. Hopefully you did those problems, because those would be the answers that I might ask, hmm, what was the answer to the second titration calculation for a pod quiz? Buffer. A buffer reduces the effect of adding an acid or a base. And really, it reduces the effect of anything. A buffer is a normal word. Um, I have Mrs. Harbin come into my class every once in a while to buffer my students because she's really nice and friendly. That way, when I come in and I'm cranky and mean and crotchety, then people would go, oh, Mrs. Harbin made us feel so happy. Mr. Folly's grumpiness doesn't matter as much. So reduces the effect. A buffer reduces the effect of an acid or a base. If you add an acid, the pH should go down a lot. But a buffer makes it so it changes very little. So it still changes, but it changes very little. If you add a base, pH should go up a lot. But the buffer makes it so that it changes very little. Here's my question. Who is buffer? Vince or my dog? I'm going to warn you, my dog works out. Vince, well, by the way, the answer, my dog is buffer than Vince. Look at that. My dog power cleans 180 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Buffer has two parts, an acid and a base. Buffers are partners, where one partner has an extra H, the acid part, and the other part doesn't, the base part. So examples of this would be if I had HNO2, notice it has an H, and its partner would be NO2 negative. If I had H2SO3, its partner would be HSO3 negative. Notice it has one less H. Okay. It can happen with a base, too. NH3, which is a base, remember that's ammonia, and its partner would be NH4 positive. Okay? So the difference would be just one H positive. Okay? So buffers are partners. So one partner has an extra H. Really, it's an H positive. And the other part doesn't. So this would be the acid part, and this would be the base part, because the acid part has an extra H. HF slash F negative example. These guys can make a buffer, because notice the only difference is an H. If I add H positive, H positive, positives love negatives. So H positive will react with F negative, and it'll make HF. Now you think, dude, you just made an acid. That's just totally going to like change the pH and make it low. Well, it doesn't. I want to draw your attention down here. The only thing that changes the pH is H positive or OH negative. So HF is not H positive nor OH negative, so no pH change. Okay? So this buffer, this H, this F negative part, removed the H positive. This would have changed the pH, but it was removed by the F negative. If I had OH negative, what will it react with? Well, I'm not having any special drama here. OH negative is going to react with the other part, which will be HF. OH negative reparts, reacts with the part with the H, and it makes my favorite drink, Diet Coke, oh wait, no, my favorite drink of water, plus F negative. See how the H goes to the OH, and I get F negative left over. So that's not H positive, nor F negative. I'm sorry, nor OH negative. So no pH change. So that's how a buffer works, is it changes H and OH into things that aren't H and OH anymore. Where is this used? So buffer systems are used a lot, believe it or not. Our cells need to keep a pH close to 7 or they have problems, which means cells that have problems die. 
Okay. So if you remember in biology class, here's my great picture of a cell, um, there's hydrogen ion pumps, which, hey, that controls pH. And it regulates how much pH, how many H positives are in and outside. And if that gets messed up, what happens is you get a cell that's messed up. And if enough cells die, then you start to have real problems. Okay. It's also used in many other things. There's buffers in, um, I don't know. There are you know, there's buffers in our blood, and I'm drawing blanks on buffers. Mrs. Harbin, can you think of another buffer? Oh, we're drawing. We're all drawing blanks on buffers. But the, oh, in bufferin, you have buffered aspirin, so that um, the acidic aspirin doesn't hurt your stomach so much, which is wonderful. So sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Too much diet coke, my old favorite drink. An anhydride. Yep. An anhydride means without water. And I suppose if I said cells, I should also write blood. Blood is buffered. And the same thing if it's not close to 7, it dies. Anhydride means without water. And means without. This is like hydro, which I'm sure there's some superhero guy named Hydro Man or something that, you know, wets his pants or something. Acids and bases technically are always dissolved in water. That's the worst superpower ever. Oh no, everybody's coming. Don't worry, I'll wet my pants. They'll be afraid and run. Acids and bases technically are always dissolved in water, just like Hydro Man. If it's not dissolved in water, it's not an acid. So anhydride means without water, so this means before I add water to it, what will it be? Metal oxides and non-metal oxides, these are going to be my anhydrides. Metal oxides make bases, so they are base anhydrides. Non-metal oxides make acids, so they are acid anhydrides. And just to show you a quick example, remember on the periodic table, doo -doo -doo. A little stair step of fun. This shaded area is the metals. So if I have, for example, um, Na2O plus HOH, I would get, so the OH comes and grabs onto one of the NAs, NaOH, and the other Na and this O grab onto this H and another NaOH. And I hope we all know, oh, NaOH is a base. Do the same thing with magnesium hydroxide or magnesium oxide MgO plus H2O would we'll turn into MgOH taken twice. Okay. Non-metal oxides. Uh, typical example is sulfur dioxide, which smells like rotten eggs. It's a common pollutant plus water. And all you do when you have this is these are gases and they smoosh together in the water and they make H2SO3, a synthesis reaction. Hey, isn't that clever? Same thing can happen with carbon dioxide <sighs> plus H2O makes H2CO3. There you go. We've got yet another acid. So non-metal oxide, notice these guys are over here, doot, 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 and they make acids. Metal oxides like sodium and magnesium make base anhydrides. Acid rain is caused by the non-metal oxide, or an acid anhydride, from smokestacks. So the smoke comes up, it gets in here, and it mixes with H2O. So water vapor plus SO2 makes H2SO4. And that is acid, which then rains down. Ah! And you have acid raining on you. Okay? Same thing happens with NOx. There's different NOs that come through it. And they make HNO3, and ah, it's raining down on you. So you think, oh, no problem. So if acid rain is caused by acid anhydrides, let's just shoot up some base anhydrides, and it will neutralize it. Hey, I know how to neutralize things. If I want to neutralize an acid, I add a base. So what you do is you try and get a base to come up here. Well, here's the problem. Acid anhydrides are gases, so they get up into the air easily. Base anhydrides are rocks. Try and get a rock to float in the sky long enough to react with water vapor to dissolve. It doesn't happen. You end up just dropping rocks on plants and animals and hurting them. Here's my base anhydride. Ah, thump. Don't ask what kind of animal that is. It could be a donkey. It could be a rabbit. I'm not sure. The effect of acid rain. First of all, it hurts plants. And you go, oh, so what? Look, my Christmas tree is yellow. Well, yeah. Who cares if everyone's Christmas tree gets yellow anyway? Unless, of course, you don't have a Christmas tree. Um, but what does hurt is if your corn turns brown. Ah, I like corn. Where would I be without my corn pops in the morning? It would be terrible. 
So plants get hurt by acid rain, meaning that you get a less yield and everything. Also, statues. A lot of stone statues, especially marble statues, dissolved by acid rain. So this is a beautiful statue, kind of. And then after years of acid rain, that's like a bad ghost story. Okay? And it hurts fish. To review, a titration uses a burette. You do need to know the piece of equipment that we use to use our to do titrations with. Titration uses the formula XMAVA equals XMBVB. Anhydride is something without water. Acid anhydride is a nonmetal oxide. Base anhydride is a metal oxide. Buffers reduce the pH change. Buffers keep us alive by keeping cells at a constant pH. And I wish you an acid rain-free rainbow. Toodles.